Hello. Good afternoon. Hello, Nadine. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Excellent, thank you. So excited for to be having this discussion with you guys. My name is Nadine Jovu and I'm from Active Spaces. Oh, Kajene. Yeah, Baba. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm going to get right into it um, and I'm going to ask you, so you get this call from Brent Anion and they say you've been commissioned for season two. What is your immediate response? Uh, yeah. Matlati, I'll stop with you. All right, been waiting. Let's do it. Let's do it again. <laughs> so so my, my, my initial response to my agent, I said, oh, so there is a season two and I'm in it? And I said, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you're in it as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hallelujah, my <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so now you guys have been away from, from said for a couple of months. How did you sort of then um, get back into connecting as a family with, within your characters? Well, it felt like we never left, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's how tight we, we are. And, and, and we, we, we always chill together. We always watch and support each other as well. We we'll go check Trevor perform, and the guys come and watch me perform. I lost um, my, my song last month. They came through and, you know, just to support. And so we see each other, we visit each other's homes, and we just check up on, on each other. So when we're all there together, it felt like, oh snap, we are living that thing again. You know, that the Twalas come to life, the Silos yeah. come to life. Um, so it's, it's just felt so incredible, man. This time around, I think because we are so comfortable with each other, the performances are top notch. You know, we just lifted um, um, and the levels and the stakes of performance. The chemistry was too tight. I mean, there's a picture Reggie showed me holding Swanky's hand. And I think they were not even rolling. We're just we're always in our, mood, in our, in our zone. It's like, yeah. oh my God, it's like, like you're such a real, real couple. couple. Yeah, yeah. And we're like, yeah, that's exactly what we want, you know? When, when you see us, you must feel like, that's Temba and, 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 and Lydia Twan. Mm. And so that it's important, I guess, having that um, off camera relationship helps with making the relationship in the story seem more believable and authentic. Absolutely. I mean, it does show on screen. Um, we were talking about it earlier as well that because we spend a lot of time together, uh, initially after How to Do Christmas, the wedding. Of course, we came together as a new cast and we were still finding our feet, trying to develop the characters, that kind of stuff. But then after having finished that, like Mkati says, we never, we never actually parted ways. It wasn't like, oh, no, we'll see each other. And then we saw each other when we were shooting again. We were always in contact. Yeah. So once a month, we'd be at someone's house doing a braai or, yeah. or doing whatever. Or someone's launching a restaurant, someone's yeah. doing this. And your How to Ruin Christmas family is always there. So like you say, I mean, it, 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 it does um, uh, work out beautifully because it looks organic on screen because yeah. we really love family now. We, it's not just about actors trying to make characters come alive and bring a script alive. Yeah. It is actually about the fact that we live together. We have a WhatsApp group that never stops. That thing never sleeps. Every, every day. <laughs> every day. <laughs> yeah. And it's wonderful to see. It's, it's, quite, a, yeah, it's quite an honor. Yeah. So maybe even the next season. <laughs> Hallelujah, the next 10 seasons, thank you. Yeah. From, your, from your mouth to God's ears and then... So now, <laughs> yeah. So now we know that COVID is still something that's very um, present in the world. And so this has now changed a lot. And it's changed a lot in our art form because there's a lot of things when we are making films and TV that need a lot of connecting. Have you found new ways or discovered new ways to combat the COVID restrictions? Well, obviously, I mean, uh, uh, like with many productions, but more specifically with the ones on Netflix, um, you know, the, the, the protocols are strict. Um, How to in Christmas, uh, uh, the wedding, we actually shot and we stayed in a bubble as a crew and as a cast. And we've tried to do that in, in, in the second season as well, in, in the funeral, How to in Christmas, the funeral. Uh, it does make it a bit a bit more difficult. I mean, um, even now we're doing this thing, it could have been face to face, you know, and tip, but thankfully there's technology and we're able to carry on. But um, the fact that we had obviously testing every single week to make sure that 
should there be any intimate scenes and that kind of stuff that everyone is protected and safe. That's 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 just standard protocol across the world. And I think that's the way the world is going. And Netflix yeah. and Christmas is are no different. Yeah. yeah. And now would you say that there are any similarities between you and your character? Uh Baba Saints, I'll start with you. Look, yes. Um, number one, I think the biggest similarity is that uh, Move Twala has got two sons. I have two daughters. Uh, but we were saying earlier that there is really no difference. In the old patriarchal way of thinking, one would say, but you know, you, you need in Dodana because the surname and all this kind of stuff. And you're like, no, but I, I can play with my girl children the same games I can play with my boy children. That it doesn't go the way there is no importance to a child being a male or being a female or anything of that sort. So, so yeah, so there are differences, I guess, in, in, in um, I wish I had his money. Um, so there's no difference. There. There's a big difference there. I wish I had his money. But I think essentially him, him and I both want the same thing out of life. You want to have a happy family life. You want a happy partner. You want happy children. You want to have no, no problems. You want to have a nest egg. You want to have a legacy that you're going to leave for your children. Um, it, it, it's maybe in how the two men, uh, as in Saint Cecilia and Vostwala, go about getting their desires kind of met. Yeah, that's, that's, that's essentially just the main, the main difference. Okay. And you know, I mean, the body is mine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so I use my body to play Tema. Um, so there's not really much of a difference, but the difference that we find is within the story and the characters. Um, yeah. um, Cause it's two different people, you know? Um, so I, th I think what we find, what Mutlati finds in the script is what's different from, from who I am. And, and, okay. and who I mean, Temba, as we know him from season one, the guy, he loves his bottle, you know? That's the question. <laughs> 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 That's the question. Next question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving right <on. laughs> Now, both of you have, um, I think, very important um, topics within your characters about problems in society. Obviously, Babu Saint yours being or Vusi's issues being financial problems. And then you, Motlatsi, um, he's facing, you know, postpartum issues with his wife and just helping her through that. How much research or how did you go into research with both these issues to make sure that you played that, those issues authentically in the story? I mean, I'll, I'll kick it off. I've, 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 I've been a father twice now in terms of experiencing um, the whole nine months and then um, yeah. that experience, like you can't buy it. You know, it's either you have it or you don't. And it, so much goes down, particularly with women when they, when they have to come back to hormonally. Um, and, and also, also how we relate now. And particularly because I'm gonna do it. No, you gotta be there and for go mom done up my hold my hand. And then other people like, no, don't go through that. Um, but nonetheless, I think my experience from home, I then applied it into the script. Um, you know, because cause I remember it very well. I know it my melancholy is super much no conflict those are things that I think we get to address in, in this in this picture um this season that people um says you know um and fit a celebrator and if it's so far she this is our go no Christmas it doesn't mean good Melisil. Only Christmas it means Melisil. So whether anyone goes and into Zaki as Fulebubo, let's all get along. Let's all be a family and reunite. Sing up imposing what we wanted to do, even to an end or in our lives, even to an end Yes, sir. Yeah, so, so now I'd say that, you know, and, and I always think that the basis for any good story is that script. 
Yeah, if you have a, an, an awesome script like we've had for both seasons of How to Ruin Christmas, the wedding and the funeral, it makes it very easy for an actor to prepare because, uh, you know, in as much as, you know, the, the stories are relatable one, the characters are relatable also. So, uh, as I was saying earlier, that the choices have already been made, the actor choices have been made in season one already. So, so most of the preparation was done in preparation for season one, the wedding. But then because you've made those kind of decisions as to this is what my character is about, this is how we would respond to X and Y and Z, it makes it much simpler when you walk into a season two, uh, like the funeral. So you know that this is not a forced thing. How would you react, respond to this? But then now the world evolves and evolves, the world changes, which then pushed, 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 pushed me also to now think differently around how would it be like, I, I, and I've always, I've, in doing research now for that particular thing that's come up in, in, in season two, I have way too many examples of people that have gone through that awful experience of kind of losing it all and, and having to face possible ruin. Um, so it's very easy because, you know, you think about it, how, how would it feel to, to lose the things that you hold so dear? Uh, one, I mean, it's the death of a family member, but also against that is now this other world that that's now changed yeah i would really oh insufficient funds void ah! Get the time. Ah! <laughs> okay, zamale. zamale from there i i'm sick and tired of this machine of yours i'm going to a real real establishment some mickey mouse here <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, in closing, I just want to ask you what you're looking forward to this Christmas. Well, I'm looking forward to the 1st of December on a Friday, season two of How to Ruin Christmas called The Funeral on the 10th. It will be available globally to every single person of the 214 million people that are, that are, that are members in 190 countries. Imagine that. I mean, we used to work on, on South African television and if something is huge, you wait for the omnibus to go and see it maybe next week or on the weekend. Yeah. Now, it's there. Worldwide. I mean, ha! Ha! I, I, th I think I share the same sentiments with yeah. Saint. Um, to share how to ruin Christmas, the funeral, with the whole world, with the Netflix family, like 210. It's not... It's not, it's, it's, it's not it's, it's not thousands here. It's millions of people globally checking how to ruin Christmas, the funeral, on Netflix. And it's, it's, it's like a dream come true, you know? I mean, I remember last season when we were getting calls from, from France, from Argentina, from, you name it, just wanting to, to, to know about us. I've got journalists who are following me from, from all these countries, and I don't even understand the language, and they're like, oh, man, we love your work. Mm -hmm. So you understand, you know, we're doing it again this season. This time it's even more people. You know, we've yeah. won already. Um, so what more do we need? I think with this one, we'll actually win more. So you got to watch this show. It's amazing. And on top of that, actually, just in parting, I think that the most important thing is with uh, Netflix, having set up Netflix South Africa, it means our stories are getting heard. Yeah. We're no longer just sitting and waiting on Hollywood to bring up what we what they think is important. Yeah, it is our own local story that 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 the world is now becoming uh, uh, that that is becoming available to the rest of the world. Yeah. And I think for me that's more exciting than anything else. If you think of Netflix, I mean they've gone in uh, how many things have they done in South Africa now? Mm -hmm. I think give a Queen Swan, or seriously single, uh -oh. all these things. How to ruin Christmas yeah. and that. Jaiva. What Jaiva? Gee oh, whiz, I mean oh, Jaiva, dude, wow, you know? Right. And this is a South African story out there to the whole world. Yeah. We're no longer, you know, there's no film market that somebody's got to go there and go and sell a film at, yeah. at mid end in France or that. that, that, that. See, on. Basically, it's, it's on. on. It's on. Yes. And the world can get to see how our traditions as well, Tinalai, South Africa, and me how we get together and all of those things. So thank you so much. This is so exciting. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. This is so exciting. Congratulations once again. Okay.
Jin, buaya apa? Ya, buaya abangnya. Buaya abangnya. Thank you. Buaya abangnya. Sak paru. Sludge. Yeah. Um, Eating down there. Oh, it's coming. Uh, it's coming here. Oh no, this one's smaller than the one while it's coming. Yeah. This one's smaller. I'm so kind of a baby. I don't know, I'm not sure what four cigarettes and ketchup. Oh! Yeah.